Hello everyone. In this video, let's try and understand what we mean by the cell cycle. Now, if you look at the behavior of cells, we get to see that cells go either of two events. A newly formed cell would grow in its size by increasing its cytoplasm by a certain process called as cell growth. And this cell, once it reaches its maximum size, would divide into two cells by a process called as cell division. These two cells further grow in size by cell growth and they further divide by cell division. So at every stage, if we follow one cell, then we get to see that the cell keeps alternating between cell growth and cell division. In other words, these two form a cycle that the cell keeps repeating. This is what we mean by the cell cycle. Okay, let's go further and understand this cell cycle. Now, if you look at the cell cycle, this part over here is where the cell is dividing. So that's the dividing stage. And that part where the cell is growing is the non-dividing stage. So there are two parts to the cell cycle, a dividing stage and a non-dividing stage. Now the non-dividing stage has a separate name to it. We call it as the interface. Now, if you look at the cell cycle, as the cell does rounds through the cell cycle, it keeps on repeating divisions. So the time spent between two divisions is what we mean by the interface. Inter means between and phase means stage. Okay, let's go further and understand this interface in detail. So if we look at the cell cycle, we get to see that the time spent by the cell in dividing is a very small fraction of the total cell cycle. In fact, if you look at the human cell, the interphase lasts for more than 95% of the total cell cycle. The interphase in turn can be subdivided into substages. For example, if we talk about cooking, then we cannot cook food unless we have gathered all the ingredients that are required for cooking. In other words, I would say that we need a certain preparation before we can actually cook food. Similarly, there's a certain preparation that is required by the cell before it can actually divide. Which means that though the cell division occurs over here, the preparation for cell division begins right in the interface. In other words, a certain part of the interface is spent in preparation for cell division. But what kind of a preparation would a cell do for cell division? Well, let's try to understand. So if you look at the eukaryotic cell, we get to see that the DNA is within the nucleus of the eukaryotic cell. This DNA codes for RNA and the RNA codes for protein. Now, the different types of RNAs and proteins have different functions. So the type of RNA and proteins synthesized by a cell at one point of time decides the functions that the cell does. So going by this, there will be two cases to talk about. One case where the cell is synthesizing all those RNA and proteins that are required for its normal functioning. And another case where the cell is synthesizing only those RNA and proteins that are required for cell division. And this would come as a preparation to cell division. So if we go back to the cell cycle, we get to see that there are two parts to the interface. One part where the cell is synthesizing all those RNA and proteins that are required for its normal functioning. And there's a preparatory part to interface where the cell is preparing all those RNA and proteins that are required only for cell division. Now, if you look at the preparatory phase, there's something more to it. Like normally when we talk about division, we mean reduction. Like if we cut an apple into two, we get to see that we get to have two halves. But that is not what we mean by cell division. A cell does not divide into two half cells. These are two complete cells, right? So it divides into two smaller cells, but complete cells. Which means that the two daughter cells that are formed, they have all the kinds of components that would be there in their mother cell. Again, the two daughter cells would have as much DNA in them as would be there in their mother cell. But how can this happen? How, after division, can the DNA not be reduced but stay the same? There's only one way that this can happen. The DNA is duplicating before the division. And that's what will also come in the preparation to cell division. So if you look at the cell cycle, in the preparatory phase, there's one more stage 
where the cell is synthesizing the DNA to twice its content. And this phase is called as the S phase. Now we get to see that DNA synthesis does not happen immediately after cell division. Okay, so right after cell division, we get to see that there is a time gap before DNA synthesis can take place. And this gap is called as gap one or post mitotic gap. Wait a minute, we do not understand the word mitotic, but then we'll learn about it in a while. The reason we are calling it post is because it comes after cell division. This gap is simply called as G1. Now, similarly, cell division does not happen right after DNA synthesis. There is a time gap called as gap 2 or pre mitotic gap. Pre because it comes before cell division. This again is simply called as G2. Now, if you look at the interface, there are three phases to talk about. G1, where the cell is synthesizing all those RNA and proteins that are required for normal functioning, and the S and G2 phase, where the cell starts preparing for cell division. If we go the interface is a resting phase hai, do divisions. But it is in the S phase and the G2 phase itself that the cell is cell division ke preparation. Mein jut jata hai. So, cell division ke turan baad wo ek hi phase hota hai jahan cell apna jeevan jeeta hai. Lastly, we'll very shortly talk about the cell division part. For this, we will have to go a little into history. So, if you look at the evolutionary time scale, then at the start of life, all cells were dividing by a process called as binary fusion. In this, DNA duplication happened right at the time of cell division. But a few billion years later, advanced eukaryotic cells came up with a new process of cell division called as mitosis. In this, as we just learned, DNA duplication happens in the S phase way before the DNA, the, the cell division. And also there's a sophisticated molecular machinery called as the mitotic spindle that is used to separate the duplicated DNA. So if we go back to the eukaryotic cell cycle, we get to see that the cell division has a separate name called as the mitotic phase or simply the M phase. The M phase further can be divided into two parts called as karyokinesis and cytokinesis. And this karyokinesis can further be divided into four sequential parts called as prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But more about mitosis in our future videos. That's it to the cell cycle topic. Thanks.